If you are in the market to build a brand new PC or you just wanna build a PC for a friend and you don't wanna go use deal haggling like I do every single month, then today's build is going to cover you for some of the best price performance that money can buy. So starting off here, we've got an RX 570. These are on eBay at the moment, readily available for about $88 shipped. Even if you live international, this seller will ship it for $22 still making it a very good deal. Now going through some of the other parts because the tally of this build is $344, making it extremely good price performance for gaming, not only 2019, but also gaming at 1080p, medium or high settings, depending on the game. But the CPU, $18.80. Now I did a video, I'll put the link up here, where I tested this CPU out and it was a great combination with this RX 570. Basically, this CPU has gone down from $24 to $18, and this seller has over 9,000 of these available, meaning you're not gonna have a problem getting one of these if you're in the market for one. Now, next up, we got the motherboard, $48.88 plus $8.81 shipping. That brings it to a total of $57.69 shipped internationally. Great little board, especially since it does support ECC registered memory, which is also gonna play a role in today's build because we're gonna be saving money on the CPU, saving money on the memory, and now also saving money on the motherboard since it's not going to break the bank. Now, if you want the fast experience of having an SSD, but also having more room for games and also movies, then usually this combo here, 120 gigabyte SSD plus a one terabyte hard drive is the way to go. And I will be going with that today, but after checking prices online, you can get a 720 gigabyte SSD for $64 shipped worldwide. This kind of value is starting to beat that of the hard drive and the 120 gigabyte SSD option, which tallies around about the same money, but I'd rather have SSD storage, which is a lot faster than your typical one terabyte, 7200 RPM storage. And last up on the list is the case and power supply. Here I got this on a sale. This is the MX330 from Cougar. It's costing me about 80 Aussie dollars, which would be about 60 USD. Comes with a 500 watt value line power supply, which isn't too bad. It'll do a great job of powering today's system, which isn't really to be overclocked. But speaking of a non-overclocked build, although we won't be getting the benefits of ramping up the speeds on our CPU and GPU, we will be getting the benefits of saving power in that this build will use pretty low wattage. So that means in turn, less heat will be dumped in our case. And that means we don't have to fork out extra money for a more expensive case and also power supply. All the links for this build will be in the description below, but with that aside, let's build this thing, see how it looks, and also more importantly, see how it performs. So we've just pulled apart the graphics card now, and this is so dirty. I'm actually surprised it's this dirty since it is an RX 570. It's only been on the market for a couple of years, but whoever used this for cryptocurrency mining probably used it since it was released. But that's not a problem because we're gonna now clean it all down with our trusty friend here, WD-40. In Australia, I use a brand called Multipurpose Spray. It actually is better than WD-40. Then we've got besides that, alcohol wipes. These are fantastic for getting off all the dirt and grime initially off the card. Then besides that, we've got our trusty friend, the DataVac, which is gonna take care of hosing this thing down with a lot of air. So now this RX 570 is looking really good, except in between the VRM components, that's the MOSFETs, chokes, and also capacitors. There's a little bit of dirt stuck in there, but not to worry, we're gonna use a bit of brake cleaner, and that's gonna get out all this dirt and grime. Now I only use this usually if it does get very dirty on these parts, and this is exactly the case here. This thing needs some brake cleaner, AKA tech, yes, love it.
Now typically in this fashion, your build would be complete, but since I'm gonna be flipping this thing afterwards, I'm gonna be adding one meter of red LED inside, as well as two red LED 12 centimeter fans at the front of the case to not only spice things up, but to also give it a bit of bling. And of course, just like sports cars, red will make this PC go faster. So we just finished up playing those three titles and before we talk about those results, we're gonna talk about the PC itself. I'm just blown away by this price performance and although I do get better deals, the one-time deals every month on the monthly parts hunts, this is different because it's readily available. You can go on AliExpress and get these parts delivered worldwide pretty much for the prices that I stated in the title. So it's coming in under 350 bucks and we've got a Xeon here that's only coming in at $18.80 and the seller's got over 9,000 of these things available. And even then, the better news on top of that is, since it is a low powered CPU, it's going to have a long life to come. And the other benefit of that is the motherboard, which people are like, Brian, this motherboard's cheap, man, I can't trust it. Since it's only using 35 watts, the MOSFETs on this VRM are doing absolutely fine. In the previous video I tested this motherboard, it was only getting up to around 60 degrees, which is absolutely fine. And then those low powered components, coupled with the fact that we're going with the budget case, budget power supply, and the RX 570, we were only seeing maximum of 260 watts on the power meter whilst we're testing Apex Legends and also Crisis 3. CSGO did use a little bit less power, but that is a less demanding game, especially on the GPU side of things. So all that heat, or should I say lack of heat, being dumped into a case like this is so easy to handle. You don't have to worry about going out and buying maximum airflow cases and really big power supplies because something like this is not going to juice much power at all, but it's still going to get great FPS. When I put my hand at the back while I was playing games, it was like a lukewarm air coming out the back. The power supply was basically cold, which in this case, we were using a budget 500 watt power supply. So a 400 watt power supply is gonna be a similar story, which is not gonna be strained really at all, but in fact, it's gonna be a great thing since it's gonna be hovering around its 50% sweet spot. So you're gonna be maxing out the efficiency curve on the power supply, which means you will, on top of all the low power consuming parts in this build, you're gonna be saving even more power because your power supply is gonna be running at its best efficiency peak. But now going through some of these parts individually, and first off, the cooler on the CPU. That thing's got a little bit of bling. It's only coming in at 14 bucks, and it does an absolutely fine job of cooling down the 2420V2. But keep in mind, practically anything could keep 35 watts under control. But also coupled with cheap DDR3 memory, which you can pick up for next to nothing, and the motherboard and the CPU and RAM are all readily available. And so something like this is a great choice for anyone in the world. And that's why this budget build is pretty much so special for me because it's pretty much hitting a point where it's a staple for someone who wants to get into PC gaming. And now you're probably thinking, okay, the uh, 2420 V2, it only goes up to 2.5 gigahertz across those six cores and 12 threads. But here's the thing, a lot of the new titles like Apex Legends and other titles coming out in 2019, they're utilizing all those cores and all those threads. So you are pretty much getting the best out of the CPU. And at those six cores and 12 threads at their max speed, it'll pretty much keep any GPU in the budget area under control, like the RX 570 and also the GTX 1650 if you wanna go that route. So that's what makes this combination so powerful for someone who wants to get into PC gaming, but doesn't wanna go use deal hunting like I do every month 
that still wants to get really good value for money. I mean, under 350 bucks, it's seriously given out a lot of price performance. Though the last two things I wanted to talk about before we get onto the games is the bling as well. I managed to add a strip in here. That only cost me $2. Then I added two red fans at the front, which added more bling. But on that note, I want you guys to let us know in the comment section below, what do you think of the looks? Do you think it's a bit too tacky or do you like the red LEDs inside? So we've got the bling and we've also got the performance. And the RX 570s, you don't have to worry about them going out on you anytime soon because a lot of the Ethereum miners, that's a cryptocurrency, they bought these RX 570s and then in a few months or even half a year, maximum a year, Ethereum and cryptocurrency went bust, especially for GPU mining. And they brought in all these ASIC miners, which basically did a much more efficient job of mining cryptocurrency than a gaming graphics card ever could. So that's why you're seeing just a continual flood of these GPUs on the market. And so with that, you really don't have to worry about getting hosed, especially if you're buying these parts over AliExpress or eBay, where you get buyer protection. And the worst thing you're going to come into with RX 570s is the seller's just too lazy to flash back the gaming V BIOS. And this is exactly what happened in the case of my RX 570s that I bought up here. And that's just a simple thing. You go to Tech Power Up, download the V BIOS, and then quickly flash it on, and you are good to go. Though the gaming performance with this PC was a little bit of a funny one. I mean, Apex Legends ran absolutely fine. CSGO giving out really good FPS and the 1% and 0.1% lows really good on both those games. But Crisis 3, man, this game, even in 2019, 1080p high settings, like I didn't go for the very high settings, I just went for the high settings. It was still ridiculously hard for this setup to run. The GPU was getting maxed out at 100%. And this is an RX 570, which was released years after Crisis 3 was released. So it's such a demanding title. I believe the 2080 Ti even has a hard time playing this game at 4K, at least from what I remember with the testing. So Crisis 3, man, that game ain't going anywhere soon. Very demanding title. And I mean, that can it run Crisis. It's not just a joke, not just a meme. It's the truth. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, then be sure to slap that like button right on the chest. And also let us know in the comment section below, do you like this build, how it turned out aesthetically? Do you like the performance? Is there things that you would change personally? If so, drop a comment in the comment section below. I'd love to know what you guys think, but I just think what we've got here personally is a value king. And we've also added in a bit of bling on a budget, I don't think you could ask for much more, especially if you don't want to go out and get local deals. You just want to sit on the computer, jump on the internet, buy the parts, and get them shipped to your door. And that's what this thing is all about. And with that said, I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. And if you're enjoying the content around Tech Yes City, I know I say it all the time, but if you really enjoy these videos, be sure to subscribe and hit that bell notification to see these videos the moment they drop. And I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out for now. Bye.